Hey, good morning. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I don't know at what time you'll be watching it. So let it be anything. So, I hope you're doing safe. Be safe, be joyful and keep smiling. Just be safe. Finally, we'll start. What we were continuing, we'll continue with our discussion on the second chapter, which was motion. And this will be our second lecture. In the first lecture, the first thing which we discussed was an overview of the chapter. Means what topics we will be dealing with in the entire chapter. Fine. Okay. Then we started with rest and motion. We understood what is the meaning of rest, what is the meaning of motion and their examples. Then finally to end with, we discussed what is the meaning of, we understood that the word motion and rest are relative. It depends on the person or the observer who is observing the motion. Fine. This is what we studied. In the, the PDF notes was provided to you. You can watch the video. And please write down the PDF notes in your exercise book. That's simple. We we'll watch the video and write the notes in the PDF notes in your exercise book. That will be sufficient. So we'll start. Okay. What we'll be discussing today is we'll start with different types of motion. Different types of motion. We have already mentioned that everything in the entire universe is in motion. Yes or no? Obviously, yes, no. Just listen. Suppose if I'm just standing still over here. Yes, I'm just standing still. In that case, to a person standing or sitting over here, you might feel that I am at rest. But fortunately or unfortunately, the earth also happens to rotate around the sun. What does that mean? Even we are moving together with the earth. In other words, even we are in motion. So in some sense, nothing in the universe is at rest. Everything is in motion. So depending upon the motion, what kind of motion is exhibited by the object or particle, we say motion can be broadly classified into seven categories. The first is translatory motion, translatory motion. Second is rotatory motion. Third is circular. Fourth is oscillatory motion. Fifth is vibratory motion. Seventh is, sixth is periodic motion and seventh is non-periodic motion. These are different types of motion which can be, which a particle can exhibit. Now what we will do is, next is, we will choose one motion and then we will discuss about it in details. So let's move on. Let's move on to the next slide. Hmm. Okay, let's. So we will start with translatory motion. Let's try to understand what is meant by translatory motion. See, I have already written the definition to save some time. That is But that is not important. Let's try to understand what it actually means. Suppose, just for the understanding purpose, first let's suppose. Suppose this is a flat road. This is a flat road road fine suppose this is a and we this is this is the ball okay this is the center of the ball let this be c let this point be a and let this point be b c if the object moves along a straight line, 
or curve doesn't matter to so, let's go to illustration also when an object moves it moves along a straight line or curve it doesn't matter whether it moves along a straight line or it moves along a curve that's not the point what matters it such that every point on the object every point on the object covers the same distance in the same interval of time if the object moves from one point to the other along a curved path or straight path straight path it doesn't matter what matters it the every point on the object will cover the same distance let's just tell you i'll give you a much simpler example suppose i'm standing over here this is my position this is my position a from this position if i move on to this position b so when i moved from this position to this position every point on my body also covered the same distance if this distance is x as i moved from this point to this point every point on my body be it my hand hairs anything my nose doesn't matter they all traveled the same distance such a motion is called translatory motion if the body moves it covers certain distance but every point on the object will cover the same distance let's try to say this this is a flat road a ball rolls on it suppose this is what this is a point d this is position 1 this is position 1 after some inter instant of time after some time let's say the ball reaches to this point and it becomes position d in that case if this is point this will be my point d dash if this is point c this will be my point c dash if this is point b let this point be b dash a this point b a okay fine we'll keep it a only see we can keep it a also a dash this doesn't matter now see just try to understand what i'm saying ye ball sorry this ball moves from here to here in that case if the point d has covered a distance x then the point c will also cover has also covered distance x point a has also covered the same distance x and the point b has also covered the same distance x that is a a better i give it dash only a dash d dash b dash c dash a dash dash b b dash is equals to c c dash is equals to d d dash then such a motion is called translatory motion is it clear it's very simple if this person is standing over here and this person reaches over here after some interval of time every point on the body his hair his eyes his hands his legs all these things would have covered the same distance if this distance is suppose 10 km and this is position 1 this is position 2 this is position 1 this is position 2 if the man reaches from this position to this position in that case every point on the body of that man every point even a single minute hair hair nose eyes everything will cover the same distance 10 km such 
a motion is called translatory motion. Now why I have done two figures just to make you visualize is that it can be straight also and at the same time it can be curved also it doesn't matter we don't care what path is taken this is a curved path curved path this is a linear path linear or other word rectilinear rectilinear Is it clear? Okay. Now the particle can move along a straight line also, curved line also. Hence, translatory motion can be classified of two categories. We know translatory motion, but the translatory motion can be of two types. One is the sorry, I'll just add a book over here. I'll just add it over here. Number one is A. When the particle moves along a straight line, it is called linear motion. Linear motion or rectilinear motion. Rectilinear motion. And if the particle or the object happens to move along a curved path, this is a straight path, this is the curved path, then such a motion is called curvy linear motion. Curve V Li. I forgot the spelling. C U R V I. I don't. Curve V linear. L I N E R. I know, I know something wrong with spelling. Curve V linear motion. Please check the spelling of this. Huh? Please check the spelling. Am I might read wrong with this? Curve V. I don't have the book also. I don't have the book also. Okay, fine. Is it clear? First. What we started with is we started with trans different types of motion, and the first category is translatory motion. The simply it means that a particle may move along a straight line or a curved line, doesn't matter. But the every point on the object must cover the same distance in same interval of time. That's it. And depending upon whether the particle moves along a straight line or curved line, translatory motion can be of two type. Sorry, it can be of two type. Two types: linear motion, curvy linear motion. Is it clear? How much time I have taken? I think it's fine. Is it clear? So just see whether you have understood everything or not. Next, see. Just now we discussed that a translatory motion can be of two type. If the object happens to move along a straight line, rectilinear motion. If it happens to be moving along a curved line, right? Curvy linear motion. Let's just go through an example. Rectilinear right? linear motion. Motion of a bullet fired from a gun. If we have, if you take a gun, please don't take a gun. Just, just I'm just saying, if you fire a gun, the bullet will move along a straight path. Obviously, for some time, but we'll assume it to be moving on a straight path. Next. We all have our sports day. I hope all of you have done march pass. Left, right, left, right, left. I hope everyone has done that. Suppose you are doing a march pass on a straight track. That is also an example of a straight line. March pass of soldiers in a parade. If you do it in a straight line. Bullet fired from a gun. March pass of soldiers. Fine. Next. If I just drop this if i just drop this vertically downward it moves along a straight path the scene it moves along a straight path if i just drop it it moves along a straight path the object falling straight towards the surface of the earth the motion of an elevator very simple you at least all of you have just went in a lift elevator you just It goes straight away. The motion of a car or train on a straight line. Obviously, if the line is straight, the motion has to be a straight line. Coil moving on a carom board. We all have played carom. I hope you all have played. Then whenever you use the striker and hit the coin, it 
even for small distance it moves along a straight line let's come to curvilinear if the object happens to move along a curved path curvilinear motion oh the best example the best example which i forgot has to be the motion of snake i love snakes motion of snake it has to be have you all seen a snake not for real at least have you seen how does it moves actually it always moves like this it has to be curvilinear the motion of snake the stone thrown in air at an angle now if i just throw like this did you observe to see if i just throw straight straight motion if i just throw like this straight path but if i throw like this it moves like this along curved path we have just thrown now like this the stone thrown means if this is the ground if i throw stone like this it will move like this this is a curved path the bird flying in the sky obviously it moves randomly we don't know the motion of a car or a track on a curved path it has to be the vehicle taking a turn on road suppose you're driving and finally something comes it turns on what you're doing is initially you were driving straight but suddenly you had to take a turn you were driving straight but suddenly you had to take a turn it was a curved path now this this is interesting the javelin thrown by an athlete i hope you have seen no whether you seen or not of this one have you seen this one? it's like a rod a big rod taken by an athlete and he throws like this he carries it like this and it was like when he throws this is an athlete he comes and he throws it goes like this and the one who is abiding by the rules of the game who throws it to a larger distance wins the game the motion of an airplane or rocket oh, we have all seen rocket then it goes like this up sometimes then straight obviously it's not a straight line that much we can say so these were examples in the entire motions different types of motion all you need to know is their definition understanding and examples nothing more next okay now let's move on to the next category of motion which is one and only rotatory motion so okay fine let's try to understand what do we mean by rotatory motion finally first let's just go through the definition when the object moves obviously the object moves but in such a way such a way that it rotates it begins to rotate about a fixed axis present inside the body so oh, since i have used the word object i must use the word object over here also then such a motion is called rotatory motion acha first let me just clear the fact what do we mean by axis axis do you all know what is the meaning of axis the word axis is actually an imaginary line it is not something it's not something physically present there it's just an imaginary thing used for understanding purpose let's see Okay, I can so I can help you with something. See, this is simple exercise book. Fine. If this body is suppose kept like this, it's going to be kept like this. Hmm. If I press like this, if I move it like this, then the body begins to rotate. This is one kind of rotation. The body itself begins to rotate, and the body is rotating about an axis passing through it. Means. for this object if it rotates like this the axis is somewhat like this 
This is the axis of the how to how to explain. Samjha, please samjha. Suppose this is the book. This is the book. And the book rotates in this manner. Then this imaginary line over here will be the axis. If it rotates in this manner. If it rotates in this manner. This is the book. See, you cannot see this line. It's not there. Axis is just an imaginary idea. It is used for visualization only. If I just rotate it like this, then the book begins to sorry, the big the book begins to rotate. Is it clear? It's just like this only. I can do it. Fine. The book begins to rotate. But it's not necessary. It's like this only. Fine. If the book rotates like this, then its axis will be towards you. The book can also rotate like this. In that case, it is rotating in this manner. Then axis will be along this line. If the body rotates about a fixed axis, and this axis has to be present inside the body, this axis must pass from the body. This axis must be pres must pass through the body. Through the body. We all know even Earth, which is a solid sphere, happens to rotate about its own axis. The if solid sphere also rotates like this. It continuously rotates like this. These are all rotatory motion. Is it clear? Am I making any sense to you? If the body begins to rotate about a fixed axis, it must rotate about a fixed axis. And this axis must be present inside the body. Only then such a motion is called rotatory motion. The body must rotate. Fine. Now it must rotate about a fixed axis that must be present inside the body. Why I am saying is because next in the next class we will deal with circular motion. And then you can understand the difference between rotatory motion and circular motion. But for the time being, just visualize over here. The body begins to rotate about its own axis such that the fixed axis is present inside the body. And these axes are imaginary lines. It has nothing to do. They are not physically present over there. Fine. Let's go through it once. Let's see. I hope it's clear. Hmm. Next. I have just written down the examples. Let's just go through it. First is the blades of a ceiling fan. The blades of the ceiling fan, what they do? They rotate. And their axis is like this. If this is the ceiling fan, they rotate in this manner and their axis is, this is their axis about which they rotate. Next, motion of earth about its own axis. Motion of earth about its own axis. It, I hope you all know that. Earth is not at rest. It rotates about its own axis and at the same time it rotates around the sun. If this is sun, it moves like this. Which causes day and night. The top spinning on it, I hope you all have seen the top. How it rotates something like this. Have you seen the spinning top? You apply thread in this and then you just throw it like this. And then after some time, it begins to rotate. It rolls like this. I hope you have seen that. Uh, this is a very famous merry-go-round. Whenever this Mela, we always go for merry-go-round. Not like this, it goes like this. Sorry, no, it goes like this. Have you gone in a merry-go-round? And then potter's wheel. I don't think we have seen potter's wheel. There's a wheel like this. The potter is the one who makes pot. He, will, he has a big wheel over there. He'll just spin the wheel and put the mud on the wheel. And then he'll just give a shape to it. Is it clear? The wheel is there. You just spin the wheel, keep the mud or the clay on the 
will talk of the wheel and the wheel automatically gets shape according to your choice whatever shape you give it five five quarters wheel now the only thing important thing which i really want to emphasize is what is the difference between rotatory motion and translatory motion what is the difference between rotatory motion and translatory motion please note this the difference between rotatory and translatory is very simple in translatory motion every object every point on the object covers the same distance every time every point on the object covers the same distance but that is not true in case of rotatory motion let's see why suppose this is a circle this is the center fine now suppose i have two points a and the other point over here b fine this is at a smaller distance this is at a larger distance this is small r this is this be capital r now if this wheel moves one cycle moves one complete rotation in that case the distance traveled by this point will be this distance this is the distance traveled by the point a in one cycle whereas the distance traveled by point b will be this and obviously we can see that the point b which is at a far distance from the center this is my center the point b which is at a far distance from the center covers the more distance compared to the point a which is at a less distance from the center in one complete cycle that's not true for translatory motion in translatory motion every point on the object will cover the same distance in same interval of time but over here we see that if it completes one cycle in that the point closer to the circle center covers a less distance whereas the point it covers this much is it clear this is only difference so i'll just wrap up the video over here today what we discussed different seven types of motions are there among these two we discussed the first two translatory motion and rotatory motion and then finally what is the difference between rotatory motion and translatory motion in translatory motion every point on the object covers the same distance in same interval of time but in case of rotatory motion it's not true the point objects closer to the center or fixed axis you can see this is axis also this can be my axis of rotation also axis of rotation the points closer to the axis of rotation covers less distance compared to the point which are at a far distance from the axis of rotation that's that's it thank you so much for watching have a great day ahead